Welcome to my new calculus channel. My name is John Gabriel and in today's video I'm going to show you how to derive the fourth requirement of the five requirements, not postulates or axioms, but requirements. The Greek word for the particular section that we're talking about is etimata, etimata. And if we look at, if we look at the original Greek here, we'll see that um, it says itiso apopandos simiu epi pan simion ethian gramin agayin. So that doesn't mean let it have been postulated and it doesn't uh, mean an axiom. So there is no such word as axiom or postulate in the entire uh, copy of the elements. Those words are incorrectly translated. Timata means requirements or claims. Okay. And this word here, it is so, the meaning of it is uncertain because it's an ancient Greek word. And it's many Greeks don't really understand this except from the context. Okay, and the context is not being postulated, so um, it, it means something else. It means literally that you can simply have the shortest distance between any two points, and we've seen some mention of that. Let's just close this. We've seen some mention of that, and I think I need to reopen this, um, in the first three requirements. So uh, let's just do a quick recap. So we saw in the previous episodes that we could, now why isn't this working? Okay, that we could define the shortest distance between two points, right? Okay, and these two points are, <laughs> are not part of the line and a line does not consist of points, okay? That's just poppycock, it's nonsense. A line is just really the distance between two points. Right, so we saw that in the first requirement, and then we saw in the second requirement that we could extend a line indefinitely, just as we can reduce it indefinitely, all right, without these two points coinciding. In other words, the locations are different. We also looked at the circle, which is the shortest given path, such that uh, all the distances from the path to the center are the same, okay? So there are other circle paths, but they're much longer than this path, which I showed you how to derive in the previous video, which is called Requirements 3, okay? So now, um, <clears throat> what I've done now is I want to show you how to derive the fourth requirement, but in order to do that, we have to derive quite a few other concepts and definitions and I have to build this up from scratch okay in other words you know not assuming anything because if I assume anything then you know the idiots of the past 2300 years will still think that these are actually axioms and they can't be proved or derived systematically which is false they can and that's what I do in this presentation so we've seen these first three and then we look at the next one, which is uh, a series of definitions. And so uh, basically define a diameter and you can read that up in your own good time. And then I define a radius and then I define what symmetry means. It's the quality of being composed of exactly similar parts or paths. OK, so this is very important symmetry. And then by symmetry, <clears throat> we define arcs or semicircles formed on either side of the diameter and then we move to definition five which says a radius meets a semicircle such that the two arcs on either side are equal if it does that then it's perpendicular to, to the diameter on which the arcs rest so you have to read these very slowly and carefully all of them here okay and and, and see that i'm actually not assuming anything until i get to uh, four, which says, since all the right angles in a circle path rest on four equal arcs, they are equal by symmetry. Okay, 
So if we go back here, then <clears throat> we take a look at this here, right angles. First, I give the definition of an angle here, and I show you that if you, I show you that you can divide a circle into four equal parts. And I do this more rigorously in my presentation, in this presentation here. So um, I advise you to read the presentation. And then I show you that the definition of a right angle is simply when the space between these two uh, rests on the same arc of four equal arcs. Okay, so you can also look that up in the previous one, and then also define perpendicular, right? So in other words, the diameters are lines which pr produce right angles, and they're perpendicular. And all these things that I derive are done systematically until I get to uh, Gabrielian definition 9, and then I'm ready to, uh, almost ready to determine parallel lines, what, to define parallel lines. So I, I go ahead and I define the cointeria angles, and this is the definition here, <clears throat> and I also give a conclusion from that, okay? And all that's left to do is to prove from the definition 9 that uh, cointeria angles on, the, on each side have a sum of two right angles. And so I do this over here also where I, I specify the step-by-step -step, uh, conclusions which lead us all, which lead us up to the final conclusion that cointeria angles always have a sum of two right angles regardless of whether the diameters, whether the diameters are perpendicular or not, and there's a chord. So for example, if we look at this section here, let's just see here, yeah. So you see, if this diameter here was slanted like that, then the, the cointeria angles are still two right angles. And that's what I proved. And then also it's very easy to see from this diagram here that you can also define parallel lines in, in, in this way, that it's a chord which has two equal arcs on either side leading to the same diameter. So that's another way. But um, you can look at this uh, applet, which I'll put a link to, and you can download it and play with it if you want. And then I'll also go ahead and show you uh, how the sum of the cointeria angles is equal to two right angles, and by symmetry, the alternate angles are equal, and hence the proof is complete. So uh, from this we know that if two lines are crossed by a transversal from cointeria, from, with cointeria angles having a sum of two right angles, then the lines are parallel. And so we finish the definition of parallel. But quite a bit of work is required to define parallel. See, So we start from definition 1 all the way through to definition 10 before we finally have the definition of parallel lines. So, I've systematically derived all of the four requirements, not axioms or postulates, because there are no beliefs in mathematics. <laughs> Faith is not required in Greek mathematics. It's all logical and rational. Okay, and in the next video, I will derive the fifth and last requirement. And before I do that in the next video, I will show you that the sum of the angles in a triangle are two right angles. And I can do this easily now because I've defined parallel lines. And we know what alternate angles are and cointeria angles are. And so, in fact, you could probably do this yourself too. It's very easy. But I will produce a video showing how to get to it. Now, the last and fifth requirement is not really about parallel lines. Parallel lines are used in the definition. But what it's saying originally in the Greek is that the if you have a diagram like this, it's saying that these, the sum of uh, these angles in here, in this triangle, are two right angles. That's all it's saying. But that's not the the main crux of of uh, requirement five. No matter how you move this transversal here the sum of these is always constant and it's also always the sum of these green ones is also always constant same on this side okay and we could look an example we could look at, at an example of that over here where we go to uh, proof of the constant sum uh, let's see here i thought i had it in here is that part three uh, 
that's strange. Right angles for L by constant sum. I think it's this one. And for some unknown reason, I don't have the graphic there anymore. Okay, never mind. Uh, maybe it's here. Let's see. No. Uh, no, it's not that. Okay, so I don't have it there anymore. But uh, that's basically it, and what I will discuss in the last uh, episode or the last video is this fifth requirement, and all it says is that the sum, the current area angle sum is constant on either side of the transversal, and it do, these lines don't even have to be parallel, by the way. They're not parallel. In fact, they have to meet, so the fifth requirement really has nothing to do with parallelism per se. We use the fact from parallelism that a triangle has two right angles, but that's not the crux of the fifth requirement. The crux is that the sum of the cointary angles on the same side of the transversal, on either side of the meeting point, are the same. This is the New Calculus Channel, and I'm John Gabriel. Till next time, goodbye.